Welcome back to 12 Days in March. This presentation will focus on the principal function of the erythrocyte, that is, the delivery of oxygen and how it is measured. So let's get started. If you can remember that the main function of the red blood cell is to deliver oxygen to the periphery, you'll be way ahead of the game. As you will see, there are lots of derivative questions and opportunities for NBME treachery based on the quantitative measures of oxygen delivery. Did you catch that? They will come after you with quantitative measures of oxygen delivery. Listed here are the specific measures we will focus on. These include partial pressures, saturation, and oxygen content, including their units of measure. Understanding the definitions and what they are measuring will permit you to negotiate the NBME language of several key disorders. In terms of derivatives, once you speak the language, you will be able to nail the cluster of questions related to carbon monoxide, methemoglobin, and most importantly, you'll be able to reason out the physiologic response to anemia. That is right. We'll reason this out so you don't have to memorize. We'll start with oxygen content. As you can see, it is very key to understanding the measures of oxygen transport. It is an annoying but important formula. It doesn't lend itself to easy memorization. The good news is that when we break it down into the delicious components, it will be much more intuitive. There are only three components, hemoglobin, oxygen saturation, and the partial pressure of oxygen, also called the oxygen tension. So let's start with the hemoglobin. This is a quantitative measure. The number 1.34 is quite convenient. First, it represents the oxygen concentration of hemoglobin. Second, it conveniently allows us to eyeball the hemoglobin and adjust the oxygen content by one-third, as you will see in a couple of slides. Next is oxygen saturation. This depends on oxygen binding to heme and specifically the iron molecule in heme. As you will see, oxygen can be displaced by other gases such as carbon monoxide, which has a greater affinity for heme, or it can be displaced when ferrous, that is iron plus two, is oxidized to ferric, that is iron plus three. Let's not forget that the oxygen saturation is dependent on getting oxygen into the blood. All the disorders associated with hypoxemia, such as hypoventilation, VQ mismatch, or diffusion disorders can all reduce the oxygen saturation. Finally, the PaO2 measures dissolved oxygen. If oxygen is present, it will readily dissolve in the plasma. It is not dependent on too much other than the presence of oxygen. Normally, PaO2 is approximately 100 millimeters of mercury. If you multiply 100 times 0 0.003, the result is 0 0.3. That is, the PaO2 measure contributes very little to the oxygen content. We'll review that momentarily. The first thing to note is PaO2 is obtained from arterial blood gas analysis. That is, you won't have to calculate it. It will be given as a numeric value if they want you to have it. Key point here is that it is not impacted by disorders of hemoglobin such as anemia, carbon monoxide, and methemoglobin. The PaO2 is determined by alveolar oxygen and the alveolar capillary interface. Let's look at this pictorially with this illustration. We can breathe in oxygen. Assuming normal lung function, oxygen readily diffuses and dissolves into capillary blood. So oxygen readily diffuses into and dissolves in the plasma. PaO2 is a measure of dissolved oxygen in the blood. It is not impacted by anemia, carbon monoxide, or methemoglobinemia. It is impacted by cardiopulmonary diseases discussed in other sections. Just a reminder, the PaO2 is not calculated from formula. It is determined from arterial blood gas analysis. They will either give you the number or just ask you what it is doing in principle. That is, is it low, normal, or elevated according to the clinical presentation. So here is the classic anemia scenario. They will give you a patient with anemia and ask what happened to the partial pressure of oxygen. The answer is no change. A low blood count doesn't impact the ability of oxygen to dissolve in the plasma. Let's move on to the oxygen saturation. Pretty straightforward. It measures the percentage of heme binding sites occupied by oxygen. 
Under normal circumstances, that value is greater than 95%. The key point, it is not affected by anemia. There are fewer cells, but the cells which are present still bind oxygen just fine. The next slide is an FYI. I include it for honesty, but you can disregard it as soon as you hear it as it might be confusing and isn't generally tested, but good to know for those of you who are going into ER med or some similar field. The oxygen saturation on an arterial blood gas may vary from that of the pulse oximeter. The pulse oximeter only measures two wavelengths and in so doing can miscalculate the true oxygen saturation. Specifically, when measuring only two wavelengths, carbon monoxide may be sensed as oxygen, giving the patient normal appearing O2 saturation. The co-oximeter instrument, on the other hand, used in blood gas calculation, measures four wavelengths of light and consequently detects a true reading of the oxygen saturation. So just be vaguely familiar with the difference between the pulse oximeter and co-oximeter. On the boards, when a saturation is reported, they are almost always referring to the arterial saturation. So here is the normal saturation. 95 to 100% of the heme binding sites are occupied by oxygen. This is not impacted by anemia, as we'll review shortly. Oxygen saturation does depend on the amount of oxygen available. As such, oxygen saturation can be affected by cardiopulmonary diseases that affect ventilation, perfusion, and diffusion, as discussed in cardiopulmonary sections. As oxygen binds iron in the ferrous form, Fe plus 2, the O2 saturation will be impacted by the presence of oxidized ferric, which is iron in the Fe plus 3 form. O2 saturation, however, does not depend on the number of RBCs. Now we are back to our anemic patient. Based on the discussion, the oxygen saturation is not affected by the presence of anemia. It is affected by carbon monoxide, the ferric form of iron, and those cardiopulmonary variables which affect normal oxygenation. And finally, this is the big one, oxygen content. As mentioned previously, PaO2 contributes little to oxygen content. Hemoglobin is the major player. Under normal circumstances, oxygen saturation also contributes little to oxygen content. So here it is. Oxygen content measures the amount of hemoglobin and how much of that hemoglobin is bound to oxygen. Let's look at typical or normal value. Look at hemoglobin first. The normal value is approximately 15. When multiplied by 1.34, it gives you an approximate content of 20. Now let's look at the oxygen saturation. The normal saturation is about 100%, which gives a value of 1.0. That doesn't really change the oxygen content. And look at the dissolved oxygen. PaO2 is about 100 millimeters of mercury times 0 0.003 equals 0 0.3. As you can see, the PaO2 contributes very little to the overall oxygen content. The main contributor oxygen content under normal circumstances and normal meaning with normal saturation is the hemoglobin level. So the oxygen content measures the number of RBCs and the amount of oxygen bound to hemoglobin. So here is the excitement. The patient has anemia. First note, oxygen readily diffuses into plasma. It is not changed. Secondly, the percentage of available heme binding sites to oxygen has not changed. So here is the excitement. The oxygen content hemoglobin has dropped from 15 to 9. So you can do the math. Hemoglobin is down to 9 times 1.34. Saturation hasn't changed. PaO2 contributes very little. So the hemoglobin at 9 times 1.34 gives us a total oxygen content of 12, down from the normal baseline of 20. Anemia affects the oxygen content, and they love this fact. This is money in the bank you are guaranteed to see some variation on this theme. For ease of calculation, the oxygen content is essentially 30% more than the hemoglobin value under normal circumstances of oxygenation. So back to our patient with anemia. What happens to the oxygen content in the anemic patient? 
pick the right answer in the anemic patient presented. The answer is still C. Let's take a break here and we'll return to discuss cardiovascular and renal response to anemia as well as a couple of other conditions that affect the oxygen content. The information is dense and I need you to be fresh.